Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Mezon African Motives. Uh, still working on our mathematics and five uh, working on our integration. Uh, we have a part that is very, very important, which is the application of the Laplace in this case. I explained on our introduction that the Laplace of a transform uh, can be given in a form of uh, the Laplace of uh, F of T in this case, whereby this is a Laplace that can be written in terms of uh, uh, e to the exponent of minus st times uh, f of t like this dt. So this whole part that we see here that we are given, determine the integral of e to the exponent of minus st uh, f of t like this, whereby we are given if f of t is 0, 0.25, this question was supposed to be asked as this determine, it was supposed to be like this determine uh, the Laplace determine the Laplace of f of t is equal to 0, 0,25t. Without, they won't give you this part. They just give you determine the Laplace. Same question that is like this is the same way they can ask the way they have given here. So it's a Laplace from the Laplace of f of t. This is the f of t that you're simply doing. But I explained on the introduction that wherever, whatever that you are going to have, guys, it does not even matter you understand the Laplace or not, because what you simply need is to substitute your f of t, the one that you are given, our f of t is 0, 0,25. Where there is f of t, we integrate, we apply our limits. So that's it. We just have to apply our limit, I mean, uh, substitute our f of t. So this whole part simply means we've got the integral of... Uh, e to the exponent of minus st multiplied to our f of t, which is a 0, 0,25 uh, t in this case. That's what they are simply saying. We integrate this with respect to t, we apply our limits. But as long as we apply our limits, don't forget all even the rules that we talked about, uh, the application of the air hospitals rules and so forth. But this part, we simply have to integrate. So how do we integrate? This is a product. We can take the 0, 0,25 outside of our integral in this case, which is going to give us uh, 0, 0,25 is one over four. So you can even take this one outside of our integral. So we are going to obtain one over four, the integral of, we've got our limits zero to infinity. So you can even start by writing T so that we can properly understand what we are integrating. As long this expression is there, we can write it in, a, in any way that we understand or in any way that we want. So how do we integrate a product? In this case, we've got a product of two terms. We are going to apply our bipartz concept in this case. Remember, on your bipartz, we are given that the integral of uh, f of x uh, by g prime, I'm, I'm gonna write in terms of x the way that you understand, then we change this to t, is f of x, uh, by gx, this is how you are given in your formula sheet, all right? You're supposed to also understand this formula. So here we are referring, when we are having a function of x, here we've got a function of t. So meaning to say, in place of x, we are simply going to replace this as f of t, uh, g prime t, dt, where there is x, we are simply using t in this case, that is the idea. So as we know, we are supposed to obtain our f of x, which is the one that we find is derivative, which is f of t in this case. We can choose uh, uh, this algebraic term. It's easier to work with this one to differentiate. So our f of t is going to be equal to what, which is t in this case. And we need its derivative. As we can see, f prime t, that is the derivative of uh, f of t in this case, which is going to give us a one. All right, we are done with our f of t, we need to find the gx in this case, which is gt from the g prime d t that is remaining, which is e dt, this part that is remaining, it is representing our g prime. So that's our g prime t with respect to t, which is equal to the remaining part e to the exponent of minus st dt. We integrate both sides so that we remain with uh, gt in this case, just like gx, all right? So remember the integral of e, guys. We've been talking about this, that the integral of e is simply e to the exponent uh, of uh, f of t that you have over the first derivative of that function of f of t. That is the e, e to the exponent of minus st over the derivative, the derivative of minus st, s is a constant. So we're going to obtain uh, minus s in this case. All right, so this was the whole part 
that you were supposed to substitute with your formula, understanding this formula, we're supposed to substitute this whole part that we see here from this integral that we are given, which we are saying is going to be one over four into whatever that you're going to obtain in this case, as we said, is going to be f of t, the integral of f of t g prime, which is this part that we have here. So our answer is supposed to be f of t, whereby our f of t is t. So this is going to be t times the uh, uh, gx, uh, uh, which is gt in this case. Our gt is this part, which is given uh, as a negative uh, e to the exponent of minus st like this over minus s can be taken negative, can be taken up, which is going to be minus e to the exponent of minus st over s. And we are given e to the exponent of minus, remember e to the exponent of a negative simply means one over. So it's going to be minus one over s e to the exponent of minus st in this case, all right? So we are going to obtain minus one over s e to the exponent of minus st. Just try to simplify properly, all right? Uh, minus the integral of, remember our bypass, the integral of f of t. I mean, the first derivative of what, t, which is our first derivative, that's a one in this case by uh, gt, which is was supposed to be gx, which is our gt in this case. So since we are to integrate, we are not going to write it in simplified form. We are going to write it before, it's, before it is simplified. That's uh, e to the exponent of minus st, over minus s, so that we'll be able to integrate it. If we write it like this, you'll be forced again to rewrite again. So that will be dx, which is dt in this case, all right? So that is what you're supposed to have. Then we are supposed to simplify and integrate in this part. So we can just try to combine our terms, one over four into, uh, this is same as over one. So that's t times negative one, which is negative t over, s e to the exponent of uh, minus st, all right? Then here we can take this negative out, the negative out even with one over s. So we're going to take it outside. So it's going to be positive one over s because s is a constant. So we can take it outside of the integral. We remain with the e to the exponent of uh, minus st in this case. All right, so this is what we are going to integrate with respect to t, but not forgetting that we've got our limits from zero to infinity in this case. Having e to the exponent of minus st, we are supposed to integrate, but this one is a repetition because we integrated this one before. The integral of e to the exponent of minus st with respect to t, this is what we got e to the exponent of uh, minus, but this time we are going to write in simplified form. Remember this part, we took it in simplified form it gave us a negative one over. So we are going to, to substitute it as a simplified form because we are done uh, uh, simplifying. We are not going to integrate again here. So write it in simplest form. So we are going to have here minus t, uh, the first part as it is, that's s e to the exponent of st plus, remember there's one over s, which was already outside of the integral. The integral of this is the one that I said, we are supposed to obtain this part, but this is the one that you're going to have in what? In simplest form. In simplest form, it's minus one over s e to the exponent of minus st. So that's minus one over s e to the exponent of minus st like this. All right, so this is what you're supposed to have with our limits uh, from zero to infinity. All right, so we can simplify uh, before we apply our limits here, we can just combine. Uh, so that was going to be, one over four into uh, this part remains as it is. So this we are going to have s e to the exponent of uh, minus st. Then we can combine the numerator to the numerator, positive and negative one, that will be a negative one. So we're going to have negative one over s times s, which is going to give us s squared e to the exponent of minus st like this, having our limits from zero to, uh, from zero to infinity. So now at this stage, after this guys, this whole question was on integration, this whole part here is on integration, but you are supposed to apply now the limit. So as you can see, just check which formula is going to be best. Yet we are yet to apply our bypass. So we have to revise your bypass again so that you understand uh, the bypass concept in this case. All right, so at this stage now, 
that is where you are supposed to think of the limits because now you are substituting the limits. So we are supposed to substitute, remember our concept there is supposed to be the upper limit minus the lower limit. You're supposed to substitute the upper limit minus uh, the lower limit in this case. So if we are to substitute the upper limit, which is infinity, we're going to put infinity, which is an infinite e to the exponent of an infinite that was going to give us infinite. So meaning to say the first part was going to give us infinity over infinity. The moment we substitute infinity, but remember now our L hospitals will test that whenever you obtain infinity over infinity, you are supposed to apply the L hospitals rule in this case, which says that we are supposed to find the derivative of the numerator and the denominator only on the part that is giving us infinity over infinity. That's where you apply the air hospitals. Not to say everywhere you're applying, the, no, only on this part. This is where we are obtaining infinity over infinity. Remember our limits where we had that the introduction of, lim uh, of limits. I said, whenever there's infinity over infinity, you apply the air hospitals rule. So you are going to differentiate the numerator which is going to give us negative one. Remember the derivative of minus t, here there's a negative one. So we're going to have negative one over the derivative of where there's, we are focusing with the function of t. So s is a constant. So we are going to find the derivative. Remember you drop the exponent s times s, which is going to give us s squared. E remains as it is. So this is what you're going to obtain. Then you apply again, that limit, which is the infinity, because we got infinite over infinite in the first place. Now we try to substitute again. So it's going to be minus one over e to the exponent of infinite, it's infinite. And s squared is a constant, constant times infinity, remember, it's infinite. So this time we are going to obtain minus one over infinite, which is what, which is a zero in this case. All right, so we are going to obtain one over four into, now in exact form, this term is going to give us minus one over infinite all right minus so this part the whole part of applying the l hospital so it was because it was giving us infinity over infinite so we're going to move on we are still on the upper limit we substitute our upper limit which is infinite here e to the exponent of infinity we said is infinite times times this constant does not change so it's going to remain as one over infinite in this case all right so this is for the upper limit minus we move on to the lower limit. Our lower limit is a zero. Remember it's upper minus lower. We substitute here, there's a zero. Here you substitute a zero here. No matter if you put a zero in the top, e to the exponent of one, of zero is one. Then if you divide zero, divide by a constant, that is going to remain as a zero. If you, have, if you are given k, I mean zero over k like this, this one is going to be a zero, but k over zero is the one that gives us what infinite. So here we are just going to remain with a zero if we substitute zero, okay? Minus, all right, so we are going to have zero minus. We go to the, uh, again, we are still on the lower limit by now substituting this term. Where there is S, we are going to substitute a zero there. So it's e to the exponent of zero, which is a one. So that's one times S squared, which is going to be S squared. So it's going to be minus one over S squared because we are obtaining a one e to the exponent of zero is one. Remember any number to the exponent of zero is a one. So this is what we're supposed to obtain at the end after applying our limit. So as we saw that the L hospitals rule is only applied where there is infinity over infinity or if it gives us zero over zero, that's where we apply our L hospitals. So when we simplify knowing that a constant over infinite is equal to zero. So this one is a zero, this one is a zero in this case. So meaning to say we are going to have one over four into uh, zero minus zero, that's a zero, all right? Then we are remaining here with the minus, zero minus one over is going to be a minus, then minus and the minus is a positive. So this one is going to be positive one over S is bad. S is a, it's a constant term. So here we are going to add one, uh, zero plus S squared, that is, uh, one over four times one over S squared. If we add a zero to one over S squared does not affect, but we can multiply a one by one, which is one over four times S squared, which is going to be four S squared in this case. So that was going to be the whole part of our Laplace. So this is the application of Laplace transform. The application of Laplace, it's a direct integration that you are doing. 
then you go back to the limits now the application of infinity of lim uh, of limits so also make sure that you watch the video on the definite integrals and also the video that we talked about uh, uh infinity limits infinity limits and also the introduction of the laplace together you can understand this type of a question whenever you're given like this it's just a normal integration apply the basic integration sometimes it might not be direct that you are applying uh, 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 you are applying by parts because maybe if our f of t like this if they give us like f of t is equal to seven it means in this case we're going to have our f of t as seven so we're going to have the integral of uh, in this case e to the exponent of minus st times seven in place of f of t we've substitute a seven with respect to t so as we can see this one you just integrate direct it's not we are not going to apply by parts because this part yes the seven is a constant but here this part it's a function of t this one is also a function of t so we have to apply uh, by parts having it in terms of what in terms of t all right so these were the steps that you're supposed to take let us continue to revise as we are preparing for our exams which are ahead of time let's continue to work with more questions uh more question papers that can actually help us to to reach the goal but for now that's it guys from Mason african motives till we meet again